YouTube. Uh, Brett Favre is the Viking. I've got a few thoughts about that, some mixed feelings. Um, we'll start with the bad. It's It, it kind of sucks that the Vikings said what they said after Brett Favre said no before training camp, and they came out and said, we're done with Favre. He said no. That's fine. It's his decision. We're moving on without him. Um, we believe in Sage Rosenfels and Tavares Jackson, and we did well last year without Brett Favre, and we're going to do well this year without Brett Favre. And then when Favre came back, or as it's coming out, Childress went to Favre and said, hey, man, have you changed your mind yet? And Favre actually said yes, and here we are. Um, it turns, turns out that that wasn't as true as it seemed it, we couldn't really take that at face value. Now, I get why they said it. You have to say it after Favre says no, because you can't count on him ever changing his mind, although really we can. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so I get why they said it. They had to. And I get why they ended up taking him anyway, even though they'd already shut the door, because they had to. I mean, Brett Favre... I, I don't think this team is any worse to have Brett Favre on the roster, and I think they could be a lot better. And that, you got to take that chance. I mean, Childress is trying to make a career for himself, and it's his contract year, and uh, it's they made it to the playoffs last year and lost. And so now this year they got to make it to the playoffs and win. And now that they've gotten Favre, if they don't do that, it's the year is a failure. So there's a lot of pressure there, and they got to get it done. And I don't love the way this was handled, but... It's a business, and Rosenfels and Jackson should understand that. And if they're not the best quarterback on the team, then guess what? They don't get to be the starting quarterback on the team, and that's just the way it goes. Um, I think the Vikings are probably going to try to trade Jackson. I don't know what they'll get for him. I'd be happy with a sixth-round draft pick, but uh, they may just end up releasing him, especially if his agent tweets about it, uh, like with Andre Allison. Now the good. Um... Favre has a high ceiling. He can win games that this team might not have won otherwise, I feel, and that is always a good thing. And if you can get home field advantage in the playoffs, if you can get a first week bye, uh, that increases your odds at getting to the Super Bowl. So that's fantastic. Um, also, the team's going to sell a lot of tickets and a lot of jerseys and make some money and get some momentum going and become more of a national team and maybe this helps down the road with the stadium issue, trying to replace the Metrodome. That's good, too. Um, so I've got some mixed feelings, but I think it's exciting. I think it's going to be zany. Uh, the media is going to eat it up, and it will be a fun ride. Um, looking forward to the Vikings-Packers game, especially the one in Lambeau. That's, a lot of people are going to watch that game. Um Concerning the whole arm thing and whether or not he can make it through the season, I'm going to focus on his first 11 games in New York where he went to an AFC team with a different offense and was struggling to pick up that offense and yet still played lights out for 11 games. Uh, the Jets were a 4-12 and team the year before. They went 8-3. and Favre completed 70% of his passes, and he threw 20 touchdowns to 13 interceptions, and um, they knocked off the 10-0 and Titans. Uh, in Tennessee with Favre at the helm. Now, it all sort of fell apart at the end of the year, uh, but he had that arm injury, and that's hopefully been taken care of. I heard that his <sighs> rotator cuff and his shoulder is still torn. Uh, he's 40 years old. Who knows if he's going to be able to keep it up. He's started a lot of consecutive games, and I'm sure he wants to keep that going. Week one, he's going to tie Jim Marshall, former Viking, and uh, week two, he's going to pass him. With 271 consecutive regular season starts. That's crazy, man. Uh, but yeah, I think Favre can do a lot of things for this team. And, um, you know, he played lights out for the Jets. I think the Vikings have an offense he's going to be able to learn quicker. Um, I also think they have a better team than the Jets were last year. And, I, I, don't forget, Thomas Jones went from in Chicago to AFC's leading rusher and scoring more touchdowns than Adrian Peterson on far fewer carries because Brett Favre was 
the quarterback. And also they improved the offensive line. Let's be fair. But uh, Minnesota's got a lot of stuff in place. They're a very good team, and Favre should be able to step in and play very well. And he's not going to have to do as much as he had to do with the Jets either. They're not going to ask him to pass 35 times a game. Uh, And if Favre's ego can stay out of the way and if he can hand the ball off to Adrian Peterson and throw when he's needed and really become a team player, and that's a pretty big if, Vikings are going to win a lot of games this year. They've got to win at least 10, and they've got to win at least one playoff game. Or heads will roll. Pressure's on. I haven't heard anything about the Williams court case yet. That was supposed to something was supposed to happen today. Um, so I'm going to check on that and make a video in the next day or two. Also, I've got some thoughts about the Kansas City preseason game coming up on Friday. Things to watch for. I'll get into that in a later video also. But I just wanted to throw this up in light of today's Favre events. Uh, and that's what I got. Um, feel free to comment, as always. Um, always appreciate the dialogue. And, yeah, that's what I got. Have a good night. See ya.